Caroline Dowd Higgins. Thanks for listening to Your Working Life, my podcast series featuring thought leaders in the career and personal growth arena. You spend a significant portion of your life at work, so I'm on a mission to help provide you with tools, inspiration, and resources so you can enjoy your career and love your life. And I'm very excited to welcome my very special guest, Felton McMillan, to the show today. Felton, welcome. So glad you're with me today. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. And I want to tell our audience a little bit about you. So for more than 20 years, Felton has been partnering with clients and creative teams to brand, design, and market products and service experiences. As founder and CEO, he provides creative and visionary leadership at Comrade while fostering a culture of collaboration and excellence. He's got a passion for getting at the heart of any problem by listening, understanding, and quickly connecting with people. After serving as president and COO at Critical Mass and VP Managing Director at Organic San Francisco, Felton founded Comrades so he could work more personally with clients and comrades on a day-to-day basis. So, Felton, welcome. I'm so excited to learn more. Tell me about Comrade and how this got started. Wonderful. Thanks again. Um, so Comrade is a strategy and design agency, and uh, I founded the company along with a uh, business partner, Darren Murata, and my wife, actually, Christy McMillan, mm-hmm. in January 2006. And our goal is to work with uh, clients large and small uh, around the globe to really help them improve their customer experience and their user experience of various web and modal, mobile Uh, products and services that they provide uh, their clients. We've developed a strong uh, focus in uh, financial services and healthcare, as well as technology companies. Excellent. So let's unpack this a little bit. I'd love to know, how are you helping companies improve their customer experience? And, you know, it's all about why should we hire you, Felton? So how is your approach different from what others are doing out there today? Sure. So first, um, I think one of the things that's uh, uh, a key way we're helping clients is really both at a strategic level as well as a detailed execution level. And that is one of the points of difference uh, in our approach and how we work with our clients. We're often asked to help our clients imagine what their, their entire customer experience with an emphasis on digital and mobile looks like over the next three or four or five years. We've done that with uh, one of the world's largest asset managers, with one of the leading uh, bank and brokerages in the U.S., as well as startups that are looking to um, really create a roadmap for what their vision of their customer experience looks like. And then we get on with the uh, process of actually designing, branding, and building uh, web and mobile uh, products and services like mobile banking or uh, uh, retirement calculators, those types of things that really help them reach and engage their customers. Uh, One of the key things about our approach is, particularly for financial services and healthcare, is we actually have partner with the entire ecosystem of the technology companies that serve specifically uh, financial companies like Fiserv, uh, FIS, and other major global players, as well as we're a vibrant part of um, the uh, startup community where we've actually helped uh, startup companies who want to serve either healthcare companies or uh, banks, credit unions, uh, brokerage firms, et cetera, create new technologies so that they can actually sell to those uh, institutions and better serve their customers. So we really have a comprehensive and deep view of uh, the categories that we focus on, and we've actually helped design products that have actually gotten to market. Um, so we're excited about uh, the, the focus and what we're able to do with clients. Yeah, I would, I would say so. So help me understand why the focus on financial services and healthcare. I mean, clearly it's booming and, and changing by the minute, especially in healthcare, but why that area of focus? So it's a great question. So uh, Comrade actually started out as more of a full-service integrated advertising agency in 2006. Um, And as we evolved uh, our own practice area and sought what was most meaningful and important to us, both as leaders of the company as well as um, the employees we wanted to hire and and retain and develop, we found that a common thread was really focusing on helping people's overall health. If you have healthy people who understand their credit, understand how to manage their money, are prepared for life's ups and downs when it comes to their their finances, as well as, of course, their actual physical health, mental health, et cetera, then we are able to contribute to society at large and help make uh, the U.S. and the the communities we do business in a much better, healthier place. So really, we're focused on helping understand how data, emerging technologies, 
how to deal with the complexity and the ecosystems that have to come together to provide health care. It's very complicated, as you know. As you said, it's changing daily yes. with regulation as well as privacy issues and now even more so uh, fraud issues and security issues around pers mm -hmm. people's per personal identity as well as their credit card information, those types of things. So it's definitely uh, provides us with no shortage of challenges and opportunities to make an impact. And exciting. Absolutely. So, Felton, you know, you, you are an entrepreneur, so you understand from the inside out helping some of your clients that are focusing on startup ventures. Any wisdom to the aspiring entrepreneurs that may be listening Certainly. So, you know, what I would say is right off uh, the bat is really have a clear understanding of what problem you're solving and why it matters and to whom. You know, often we spend a lot of time in the early stages of our work with entrepreneurs, really just helping them define and communicate and understand what problem they're solving, how their approach or technology or service offering is actually going to help solve that problem, and then get on with the task of de designing a product or service or offering that really does most efficiently and effectively solve that problem. So it's really about focus and understanding and being able to communicate what uh, what that is. That's certainly something we've seen um, uh, be a value to our entrepreneurial clients time and time again. Excellent. I love that you have that inside experience. So you've been there, done that, and can share your wisdom with others. You know, I find it interesting. Uh, now you've got to be mobile friendly. You've got to be uh, digital friendly, right? So why is that mobile digital user experience so crucial for businesses of all sizes right now? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, I think the, the first and foremost important thing to realize is that uh, customers' expectations, whether they're a customer of a small uh, restaurant or a global uh, you know, firm, they've really changed and evolved as leaders who have focused on user experience and the overall customer experience. The obvious examples being Apple, Google, Amazon, and new startups like Uber, which provides an alternative to taxi services. They've really set an expectation and raised the bar for all businesses. And I don't think at this point there's any organization, big or small, in any industry or category that hasn't been impacted by the power that's now in the hands of consumers to make an immediate uh, rating of the product or service or the experience they had through Yelp or through some other type of uh, rating system right. or their ability to share comments or their feedback about what an experience was like through their social networks and uh, through the photographs like Instagram or just through their Facebook uh, experience and with their friends and family. So really we're seeing more and more uh, organizations, big and small, start to really try to understand how this becomes an integral part of how they do business and much like we saw with the internet in the mid 90s going into the last dec last uh, you know last um, uh, century now we're seeing organizations have to grapple with what does mobile mean to their business now and how is that going to change everything from the way that they uh, market their products or services, the way they actually deliver their products and services or distribute them, or the way that they help people pay for them and protect their identity or their, uh, their financial information. Wow. Wow. Incredible. So, Felton, I love that you really focus on how brands can be successful with the user experience. What are some of the biggest mistakes made by marketers or brands sure. when it comes to user experience? Sure. So uh, a couple of things uh, I'd highlight. One is that um, it's, it's very difficult uh, to uh, lead with a solution. Uh, so really what we see is uh, smart uh, marketers and organizations, first and foremost, understanding from a customer perspective what needs uh, they're either not meeting entirely with their current offer or they're partially meeting, and trying to understand how to design uh, experiences in, in mobile and digital in particular that really meet those un, unmet needs. They don't go to market with just a solution looking for a problem, if you will. The other thing that we see uh, time and time again is what we describe as feature or content creep, where uh, an experience, a product or service, whether it be, let's say for banking, for example, where, where a lot of people within the organization feel like they need to get more and more stuff into the experience, more and more things on the website, more and more features into a mobile banking experience. When in fact, simplicity is really where the most value and the biggest impact on a customer's life lies. So really having a focus on simplicity and uh, sticking to uh, a deep understanding again of what the customer need is, is critically important. The other thing that's interesting is often people think that, um, you know, even larger organizations think that they can uh, set it and forget it. They think that they can uh, you know, solve this problem once, get the user experience or get their customer experience right once, and then it's really just about maintenance and, and they can get on with other tasks. 
the reality is you're never done. Software has changed the way that um, people's expectations are constantly being raised. And they've changed the review cycles, the, uh, the uh, update cycles, and the needs to constantly make sure you're evolving and, and, and never standing still. The final thing I would say is that uh, a lot of organizations think that it's one person or one department's job to get the customer experience or the user experience right, when in fact it's the entire organization. Uh, it's critical that uh, everyone participate in providing an understanding of how to deliver a good experience and really be focused on having a customer in perspective on meeting, meeting customers' needs. You know, it's fascinating. You're right. And we cannot um, assume that if it's good today, it's going to be good tomorrow, right? We've constantly got to be thinking forward and how we can optimize that experience for the customer. And uh, it keeps the economic engine running and certainly is great for your business in that regard as well. Absolutely. Yes, it is. It's, uh, and, you know, what's interesting is um, the, the rapid changes in technology, the advances, and, and probably most importantly, the rapid changes in how consumers are using new technology, how they're using their mobile phone to do different things, to search for products, to, to search for a restaurant, to book a, uh, a reservation, whatever the case may be. And that constant change and those constant um, needs and ever-evolving needs and the, the new competitive threats, to your point, uh, really do keep the economy going as well as need to really are a call to action for all all leaders and all organizations to make sure that they're uh, keeping uh, step with uh, with pace keeping pace with change so speaking of keeping pace with change what are the challenges specifically for mobile you know and I'll just I'll just relay a little stat I, I don't have specific numbers to put behind it but anecdotally I can tell you that I read an article the other day that laptops as such are becoming obsolete. People are not buying computers that sit on a desk anymore. I, di I didn't mean laptops. I meant desktops. Pardon me. So the mobile, the tablet, the laptop, you know, everybody needs to be on the go. So what are the challenges for mobile these days? Absolutely. No, you're exactly right. And uh, the, the mobile uh, adoption and usage and time spent by consumers uh, is, uh, is, is really... Uh, phenomenal. It's another um, uh, rapid change and rapid adoption. And to your point, tablets are even replacing laptops uh, as a way for people to access the internet or or access applications, etc. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some of the key challenges around mobile specifically are, in our experience, uh, especially if you've been accustomed to building a website or trying to uh, market or provide product services, content, uh, media, whatever the case may be, on a website. You've gotten used to certain luxuries of, uh, of real estate in the screen size. You've gotten used to the fact that standards have emerged uh, with, uh, with desktop and uh, computers. And the reality of mobile devices is, first and foremost, content breaks. It's really about a smaller, um, it's a smaller real estate, it's a smaller screen size. Uh, the variety of, uh, of devices and sizes, if you look at the, the recent launch uh, of the, the iPhone with, uh, with Apple, you see it comes in three sizes, yeah, uh, yeah. and it's getting even more complicated. So having to understand how to provide content, how to provide services or utility or features and functionality to customers across all these different real estate sizes of screens is, is a big challenge in and of itself. So really having a clear understanding of what content and again, being ruthless. There's a strategy in the market that's widely used called mobile first where you really need to think about the design process when you sit down to design your mobile experience and think, or sorry, your entire experience and think about it from a mobile first perspective because that's the first place that it breaks. The other thing that's interesting is um, the, uh, the performance still can be an issue. We've gotten so used to having uh, internet access in our home or office, and it's almost like oxygen when it goes down or when it's slow. <laughs> so you have true. trouble breathing. Yeah. You have trouble, you know, <laughs> you have trouble doing what you want to do, and it's disruptive. But the reality of, of on-the-go consumers, where they're using a mobile device to, you know, search for a product, look mm -hmm. for a local vendor, look, go to, you know, book a restaurant, whatever it is, find an, an ATM to get cash out, whatever the case may be, uh, performance is still an issue. So making sure that you're designing. Uh, the experience again with an emphasis on simplicity and not putting too much features, not too much putting too much graphics in it, so that it's slow and cumbersome. Especially when you realize that um, as much progress as the um, as the the mobile networks, the cell networks have made over the years, there still are uh, down areas and there still is a performance issue uh, when you're on the go. So those are some of the key issues that we're seeing with mobile. So sometimes less is more in regard to simplicity. 
Felton, I, I'd love to get your take. So let's say um, I'm a prospective client. Can you tell me a story about how Comrade partnered with a company and why they came to you and how did you solve their problem? Sure, that's a great question. So uh, let me tell you the story of Bank of the West, which is one of our longstanding clients. Um, and uh, they came to us with two different problems, which I think will we'll shed light on, on how we fit into the world and how organizations can use firms like us. The first problem, which they approached us in, in uh, late 2008, was really they were behind, at that point, the Internet. Uh, they had underinvested in their online banking, in their, their website, uh, in their, um, the various resources that they used to support customers who were, were moving more and more to using the Internet and wanted, to, wanted them to be there. And what we did from 2008 till recently was really help them understand how to bring digital into their organization, what the roadmap for capabilities, what kinds of teams they needed to hire, what kinds of uh, experiences they needed to offer, how they prioritize features and functionality. So really at the strategic level, much like a management consulting firm, we've helped them understand how digital and now mobile fits into their overall, overall organization. The second thing specifically, uh, recently we've, we've been asked to help them uh, translate uh, their award-winning customer service that you'd experience if you went into a retail branch of any one of their branches, uh, bank branches, into a mobile and tablet experience. And so we worked with them, and we're now on the third generation of the mobile and, and uh, tablet banking experience, where we really looked at what are the opportunities, again, to focus on simplicity, what are the key needs that people have when they uh, open their smartphone and want to do some kind of transaction or need to access their bank, or their tablet, and we really zeroed in on one of the highest uh, use cases uh, or reasons people use it is checking their balance. Uh, so we actually partnered with Bank of the West and their internal team and a technology vendor who provides the back-end technology to divine, design something called Quick Balance, which allows people to very quickly uh, see what their current balances are across multiple uh, accounts so they understand how much money they have to work with without having to log in, without having to deal with um, a lot of steps to access that information, but still doing it in a very secure way so that people's uh, information isn't compromised in any way. So that was a key example of how a, a simple feature, a simple um, design can deliver on the brand promise of customer service and, and do that in a convenient way while understanding what customers' needs are and designing something that's, uh, that's of high use and high value to them. Very proud of the results we've seen with their uh, customer adoption of their mobile banking as this being a key feature, a key reason to use their app, as well as uh, the amount of um, positive reviews and feedback that they've received from their customers. Excellent. Good example. Thank you for that. That really gives me an accurate picture of what you do. You know, I think as a customer, too, I expect speed and accuracy when I'm uh, pursuing a transaction online. How has the customer experience evolved in uh, recent years, and, and where are we going? You know, what's next? Because we expect speed and accuracy now. So what, what's next? Sure. So believe it or not, uh, customer experience as a discipline and as a, uh, as a philosophy and sort of a, even a role within uh, the organizations, we're going on probably its third or fourth year. So it's still fairly new. Uh, user experience as a subset of that, user experience focused on the actual uh, usability, the way, the performance, the accuracy, the way that a, uh, an experience works on, say, a mobile phone, like a mobile banking app. Customer experience is the entire experience across time and across multiple interaction points that you may have with any organization that you do business with as a customer. So customer experience is really at the be still at the beginning. Uh, an independent research firm that uh, focuses on understanding how uh, organizations are performing against their customer experience, um, you know, performance metrics, benchmarks, etc., did a, a global survey uh, last year and published the results, uh, re results at the end of last year, coming into this year. They said that a significant number of organizations were still just in the, we're defining a strategy phase, or in the, um, we're just repairing and just sort of barely have, uh, we're barely treading water, if you will, on fixing and dealing with uh, the customer expectations and the changes that have happened in the marketplace and our ability to adapt and evolve and meet their ever-changing needs. So I think we're first and foremost, it's important to understand we're still at the beginning. And that, that creates an opportunity for entrepreneurs. It creates an opportunity for smaller organizations to realize that you can actually compete and differentiate your organization on a superior experience, whether that be at the customer experience level or if you're more of a pure digital or mobile uh, company, can be at the user experience level. So we're seeing uh, lots of opportunity to 
uh, think about a mobile led strategy and understand how mobile is changing everything and how you can focus in on that. Uh, we're also seeing data and uh, predictive analytics and other types of use of data to improve uh, your health care experience to give you better transparency into what's going on with if you're having some sort of chronic illness or whatever. We're seeing lots of opportunities to improve the patient experience on that side. Uh, and we're also seeing uh, a continued um, interest and, and vigilance and need to focus on how uh, privacy issues, how fraud and dealing and preventing with fraud uh, have a big impact on the customer experience. So a lot of our time is spent working with our banking and healthcare clients, helping them balance the issue between speed, convenience, ease of use with protecting their privacy, protecting data, financial information, those types of things. It's definitely is still a balance for the clients that we work with. Wow, fascinating. So, Felton, anything else, as if that wasn't enough, <laughs> ahead for Comrade? Anything new and, and different that's coming down the road that you want to share with our audience? Yeah, well, I think just, just looking at, uh, as we go into 2015, uh, we're taking a very close look at, uh, at one of the things I mentioned earlier, which is starting to shift towards much more of a mobile-led strategy in terms of thinking about marketing, thinking about your brand, thinking about how you manage customer relationships and how you take advantage of, of that shift. I think, you know, as you mentioned, and, and there's wide research out there that says 2014 is the year where mobile surpasses desktop in people's usage. Mm -hmm. And I think if you look at any shopping mall or any experience where you're out and about, you see people staring into their smartphones. Yeah. So that change is here. So really taking that seriously and not you know, getting, behind, uh, getting behind the curve would be both my recommendation and something that we're spending a lot of time focusing on as we go into 2015 and beyond. Excellent. Felton McMillan, thank you so much for sharing your time and expertise. Tell us how we can find you online, specifically how can we seek you out and uh, uh, hire you at Comrade if we are interested uh, in utilizing your services. Sure. Uh, so my website uh, for Comrade is comradeagency.com, so C-O-M-R-A-D-E-A-G-E-N-C-Y.com. My email information as well as various contact information is available there. That's probably the best place. Caroline, I appreciate your time, and thank you so much for taking the, the, the time to speak with me. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. You are so welcome, and I wish you great success. I want to thank our audience for tuning in to Your Working Life where my goal is to help you design your career destiny so it doesn't happen by default. True career and life satisfaction is possible, and it's time to embrace what you love doing so you can do more of it. I'm Caroline Dowd-Higgins. Take good care.